Did you know that everything we can see, stars, planets, galaxies, even you, makes up less than 5% of the universe? Yeah, the rest? We literally have no clue what it is. But here's where it gets wild. The latest images from the James Webb Space Telescope are blowing scientists' minds. These aren't just stunning photos to hang on a wall. What we're seeing might actually rewrite the laws of the universe as we know them. From mysterious dark matter and dark energy to the very origins of the cosmic microwave background, the stuff we thought we had figured out for decades is suddenly up for debate. In this video, we're diving deep into what Webb has uncovered. And trust me, the deeper we go, the weirder it gets. So if you're into space, science, or just love having your mind blown, hit that like button and subscribe, because what comes next will change the way you see the universe. Let's get into it. One researcher, Andre Kutso, a postdoc at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, put it perfectly. Our job is to let the universe teach us how it works. And right now, it might be telling us, you've been oversimplifying me. And yeah, it looks like he might be right. Let's talk about gravity for a second, because this is where things start to unravel. Gravity is supposed to be simple. The farther something is, the weaker gravity pulls on it. The sun tugs way harder on Mercury than it does on distant Pluto. Makes sense, right? That same rule should apply to everything in the universe. Stars, galaxies, you name it. But what if it doesn't? Back in the 1970s, Astronomer Vera Rubin made a discovery that shook the foundation of physics. While studying how stars move within galaxies, she noticed something strange. Logically, stars on the outer edges of a galaxy should slow down, like the outer rim of a spinning wheel flinging water outward. Less gravity out there means less control. But that's not what Rubin saw. Instead, those outer stars were moving just as fast as the ones near the center. It was like the galaxy had an invisible grip holding everything together. That was the first big hint that something out there, something we can't see, might be bending the rules. According to the laws of physics, those stars on the outer edges of galaxies should have been flung off into deep space. But they didn't budge. They stayed put. That's when scientists started asking the big question, What's holding them in place? The answer? Something totally invisible and completely mysterious. A kind of cosmic glue they started calling dark matter. We can't see it, we can't touch it, but we know it's there. Like a ghostly hand gripping galaxies, holding them together when gravity alone shouldn't be enough. Dark matter doesn't glow, doesn't shine and doesn't emit any light. But it does have mass. And where there's mass, there's gravity. And where there's gravity, there's power. As scientists dug deeper, they realized dark matter wasn't just holding galaxies together, it was building them. According to the standard model of cosmology, right after the Big Bang, it wasn't normal matter that shaped the universe, it was dark matter. This invisible force pulled together clouds of gas and dust, kickstarting the formation of stars, galaxies, and the massive cosmic web, an intricate structure of clusters and filaments stretching across the universe. In short, dark matter is the hidden framework of everything. Without it, the universe as we know it wouldn't exist. But now, the James Webb Space Telescope is picking up signals that don't quite add up. It's like the universe is quietly whispering, there's more to me than you ever imagined. We used to think the early universe was pretty straightforward. A hot, chaotic soup of gas slowly cooling down, forming stars and galaxies over time. Dark matter, we believed, was the invisible framework holding everything together behind the scenes. And we had the receipts. Even the tiniest temperature ripples in the cosmic microwave background, the ancient afterglow of the Big Bang, seemed to carry dark matter's fingerprint. It was like the universe saying, hey, I've been here since day one. But now, we're seeing things we weren't supposed to see. Galaxies, tons of them, forming way too soon, 
way too big and way too evolved for how early in the universe's timeline they're showing up. It's like flipping through baby pictures of the universe and suddenly spotting a full-grown adult in the crib. Something's not adding up, and it might mean everything we thought we knew is about to be rewritten. One of the most distant galaxies we've confirmed so far is called Maisie's Galaxy, aka Mom Z14. And get this, it was already around when the universe was less than 280 million years old. That's basically cosmic infancy. But it gets even crazier. Some new galaxy candidates are popping up with redshift values of 20 and higher. What does that mean in plain English? These things might have formed when the universe was just 200 million years old. Now, yeah, these findings still need more confirmation. But even the possibility of galaxies forming that early, that's enough to send astrophysicists into full-on panic mode. And here's where things really go sideways. It's not just when these galaxies form that's surprising. It's how they look. Scientists expected them to be chaotic, clumpy, and under construction. Kind of like the universe's version of toddlers learning how to walk. But nope. A lot of these galaxies, they're already well-structured, surprisingly mature, and in some cases, huge. Some even seem to contain older stars and stable, organized shapes. And then there's J0107a, a galaxy recently spotted by Webb that's nearly 10 times bigger than the Milky Way. And it existed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Let that sink in for a second. How can something so massive, so evolved, exist so soon? By the current playbook? the standard model and dark matter theory, that just shouldn't be possible. And that brings us to the billion dollar question. Is dark matter not what we thought it was? Or could it not exist at all? Because of dark matter as supposed to be the silent engine slowly pulling galaxies together over billions of years, then these early giant ready-made galaxies break the entire story. And just when you think the cosmic plot can't twist any further, the Webb telescope reveals something even stranger. There's a new theory forming, one that looks at a type of galaxy in the early universe packed with young, ultra-hot stars. These stars don't just burn bright, they blast out extreme radiation. And that's where things start getting really interesting. Now picture this, billions of ancient galaxies scattered across the universe all glowing together over time. Their combined light, faint but steady, could have slowly filled the cosmos with a soft background glow. But here's the twist. As the universe expanded over billions of years, that light would have stretched out, its wavelength getting longer and longer, until it became redshifted into something we've been detecting for decades, the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. Yeah. The CMB, that cold, faint radiation we thought was the leftover echo from the Big Bang, might not be what we think it is. What if, instead of being the direct fingerprint of the universe's birth, it's actually the accumulated light from ancient galaxies, stretched by time and distance? If that's true, this changes everything. It would mean the Big Bang, as we currently understand it, might not have left behind the signature we thought it did. It doesn't necessarily mean the universe didn't have a beginning, but it does open the door to something else, other models, other origins, other stories of how the cosmos came to be, ones we haven't even dreamed up yet. And here's where your brain might really start to melt. These ancient galaxies, they might not just be passive observers in our cosmic history. They could be actively interfering with our most trusted signal in the universe. See, scientists now believe that the combined radiation from these early galaxies might actually be adding to the CMB signal. How much? About 1.4%. Now that might sound tiny, but in the world of precision cosmology, 1.4% is huge. It's enough to throw off key measurements about the age of the universe, the rate of its expansion, and how matter formed in the first place. And keep in mind, that's a conservative estimate. If we account for all types of early galaxies, the real contribution could be significantly higher. Here's the kicker. 
If these early galaxies are responsible for even a chunk of what we call the CMB, or, in the most extreme case, the main source of it, then we've got a serious problem, because that would mean we've been misreading one of the most fundamental signals in all of science. We'd have to rethink the entire origin story, how old the universe really is, how galaxies and matter first formed, even the physical laws we thought shaped the early cosmos. In short, the James Webb Space Telescope isn't just adjusting a few footnotes. It's potentially rewriting entire chapters of our cosmic history. Dark matter, dark energy, the CMB, the three major pillars of modern cosmology, they're all up for debate now. And honestly, that might just be the beginning. But hold up. Because just when you think this cosmic mystery couldn't get any more sci-fi, the James Webb Telescope throws us another curveball. What if I told you the entire universe might be inside a black hole? Sounds like pure science fiction, right? But recent research has scientists doing double tech. In a study of over 30,000 galaxies observed by Webb, astronomers noticed something really strange. If galaxies were more aligned early on, it means we might have missed something fundamental, something that could even break the rules laid out by Einstein. And then comes the real mindbender. A paper published in Physical Review D by researchers from the University of Portsmouth proposes a radical idea. Our entire universe may have formed inside a black hole. Yeah, instead of exploding from a single, infinitely dense point, as the Big Bang model suggests, this theory says the universe was born from a massive gravitational collapse. A collapse so extreme it created a black hole and everything we know today exists within it. Let that sink in for a second. This isn't just tweaking the Big Bang. This is a totally different origin story for the cosmos. It could change how we think about space, time, gravity, and even what we mean when we say universe. And there's more. Physicist Professor Enrique Gastanaga offers a fascinating twist on how this might work. He explains that when matter collapses under gravity, it doesn't always shrink into an infinitely small point. Instead, it might reach an ultra-dense state, then bounce back, triggering the birth of a brand new, expanding universe. In this view, the edge of our universe isn't empty space. It's the event horizon of a black hole, a boundary we can't cross, a cosmic shell that seals us in. So maybe we didn't come from nothing after all. Maybe we came from the death of a previous universe, a kind of cosmic reboot. One universe ends and another begins. This black hole universe theory even lines up with something just as wild. Conformal cyclic cosmology, a model proposed by Nobel Prize winning physicist Sir Roger Penrose. According to Penrose, the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of everything, just the beginning of this universe. In his model, the cosmos moves through endless cycles or aeons. One universe stretches out, fades into cold nothingness, and from that silence, a new universe is born. If Penrose is right, this isn't the first universe to exist, and it sure won't be the last. All these discoveries, strange galaxies, unexplained patterns, and bold new theories point to one thing. We've barely scratched the surface of what's really out there. Thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we're now closer than ever to uncovering the real story of the cosmos. And honestly, we can't wait to see what Webb reveals next. That's it for today's journey through space and time. If you haven't already, hit that like button, share this video, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. Stay curious, and we'll see you in the next one.